What's up everyone, April here. In this video, we're gonna talk about Power Automate. And we'll look at how we can use Power Automate to send reminders if someone hasn't added something to a list for a given time period. This actually came about from a project I've been working on recently. And as I was building the flow, I realized this might help a lot of people who need to do something similar. It shows some more intermediate to advanced Power Automate concepts like using arrays and comparing arrays. But this is applicable for so many different use cases, really any case where you want to compare one list with another and then perform some kind of action. So let's take a look at the use case and how it works. So in the scenario that I'm gonna to show today, I'm tracking items in a SharePoint list. Every week, everyone in my team has to put in an item that they're going to post to TikTok for the week. So by the end of every Friday, they should have an item in the list with a draft due date for the next week. We're using the content scheduler list template and you can see that several people on my team have different items in this list. But sometimes we forget to put things in a list and that leaves us scrambling at the last minute to think about what we want to put in. So we want to avoid that with some proactive notifications and that's where Power Automate comes in. I created this flow to send out an automatic notification every Friday morning if someone doesn't have an item in the list with a due date for the following week. So let's break down every piece of this flow. Now, since I want this to run weekly, I did what's called a recurring flow. So if we go to make.powerautomate.com and click on the My Flows tab on the left-hand side and select New Flow, you'll choose this Scheduled Cloud Flow option, which allows us to run flows on a schedule. When we do that, we can configure this trigger to specify the time zone, start time, and what days we want this to run. So I have mine set to run every Friday at nine o'clock. So I know I'm gonna to wanna to get the information from my SharePoint list, but I wanna filter it so it only returns the items for the following week. So to do that, I'll need to do some date time comparisons. And to make this date time comparison easy, I've added in the date time connector and use the get future time action. So in my case, I wanna get seven days from the time the flow executes, which will be on Friday. So I put in seven for the interval and I chose day for the time unit. So at the point in time in which this flow runs, this will get the value that's seven days from that runtime. Then I can use this in my call to SharePoint to get the items and filter it. That leads to the next step. I added a get items action from the SharePoint connector. I pointed it to my SharePoint site and the content scheduler list. And here is where I had to do that query. Now, since I only want to return items for the next week in the filter query, I'm going to put in my draft do by column, which is the column that I want to trigger off of. I'm going to say LE for less than or equal to. And now we're going to use our dynamic content in the get future time action that we just added. Now the important thing here is you want to wrap this in single quotes, as you see that I did here. Otherwise, you'll get an error. So what this will do for us is look at the SharePoint list, take a look at that draft due by date. And if that isn't less than or equal to seven days from the current date, then it won't get the items. So we did this future time action so we can do this calculation to where it was only going to get items up until a week from the date that it runs. Now that we have our data, we need to do some manipulation of that data. And that's why you see I have three initialized variable actions added here. The first one is an array variable and I'm calling this var all advocates. So for my scenario, I wanna give everyone that reports to me and put it in this array. Then I'm gonna compare that to the values that we have in that SharePoint list. And if someone on the team doesn't have an item in that SharePoint list for next week, then we know we need to send them a notification. So that's what this array will be storing, the list of all people on my team. The next array will store the output of that get item, so the people that do have items in that list. And finally, we need an array to put the list of people that don't have an item in the list for the next week. Now that we have that, it's time to start populating those arrays. This piece may vary based on your use case, but for me, I wanna get my direct reports, and that's what I'll put in that all advocates array. And to do that, there's an action in the Office 365 users connector called get direct reports. You simply put in someone's email address and it will get all their direct reports for you. Now that returns a list of objects. So what we need to do next is go to add action and add and apply to each. And this apply to each will go to our dynamic content and we'll point it to the value from that Office 365 users get direct reports. Now we need to take all of these values that it finds for my direct reports and do what's called appending that to our array. So to do that within this apply to each, we can add an action, search for variable, and you'll see an option to append to array variable. We'll get a dropdown list and we'll point that to the all advocates variable that stores everyone on my team. And then I'm gonna store their email address. 
So I'll just use our dynamic content again. And in that get direct reports action, we have a mail field. This is another optional step for these notifications. I also wanna check if I have an item in there. So get direct reports isn't gonna return myself as the manager. So I'm just simply appending another item with my email in there. Now it's time to move on to the contents of our SharePoint list. So we have another apply to each here. And for the output of this one, we're gonna point it to the value of our get list items action. And you guessed it, inside of this apply to each, we'll add another append to array action. But this time we'll point it to the advocates with TikToks because this one is for everyone that has an item in the list for next week. And for the value, we'll point that to the creator email. So this is directly from our SharePoint list. And we're gonna get their email address and put that in that array. So, so far we've gotten all of my direct reports that we wanna to check to see if they have items. We connected to our SharePoint list, filtered it so it only shows values up until the following week. And we've looped through all those objects and added everyone's email that has an item in that list. Now we need to compare the two. To do that, we'll do another apply to each. For the output of this one, this is where we're gonna start using those arrays we set up. We'll point it to the array for all advocates. And now inside of this array, we're going to do a condition. This is where the comparison happens. So on the condition, on the value on the left-hand side, we'll point that to the array of advocates with TikToks. So people that had items in the list. We're going to check if that array contains the current item. So you're going to look at our loop through all advocates array in our dynamic content and use that current item property. So it'll go through all of the people on my team and check to see if each person has an item in that SharePoint list. If they're not in there, then we know we need to send them a reminder. So in this no condition, we'll add another append to variable, point it to the advocates with no TikTok variable in the current item. Now this step here in this whole array for the people with no TikTok is optional depending on your use case. I'm not actually using it in my scenario, but I wanted to show it because there might be circumstances where you'd wanna have those values in an array. Namely, if you wanna send a mass email to everyone at the same time, reminding them to submit their items. So if you have that information all in an array, it's easily accessible and you can just concatenate all that in your to field of your email or your team's action and send that all at once. I'm not doing that in this particular case, but that's the reason why I show creating this other variable. What I'm doing instead is I wanna send individual notifications. So I've added a post a message in a chat or channel action for Teams. This doesn't have to be Teams, it could be an email or however you wanna notify people. I'm posting this one as the flow bot in a chat and I'm pointing it to the current item of this particular loop, which is the email address of the person that doesn't have an item in the list. And I'm just simply telling them that there's some action required. They need to go put in an item in the list with a link to my content scheduler list. So now we can do a manual test just to see how the process would work. So we'll run this flow. So we'll imagine it's Friday and we're getting that automatic notification. So we see it's running, getting my direct reports, looping through the content items. And now it's just doing that comparison on this last step here. See, it didn't take that long at all. It ran successfully. So if we look, I don't have an item for myself for next week. So I should have gotten notification in Teams. And if I go over to Teams, there it is. So there's my notification letting me know that I need to put in an item. I click on a link and it takes me to my SharePoint list. And that's really all there is to it. There's a few steps involved, but overall, hopefully it's pretty straightforward. Do you have any scenarios for how you might use this in your workflows? If so, drop a note in the comments and let me know how you think you might use it. So lots of little interesting tidbits and things that we can learn about Power Automate from this, especially if you're just getting started. Hopefully you'll find a good use case for it. If you find my content helpful, do me a favor and support the channel by clicking that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Before you go, I have lots of Power Automate content. Check out some of these other videos.